This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Newton versus Newton. I noticed that you all have been married for 10 years and that there's an almost a 10-year age difference between you all. And you are here, Miss Newton, seeking the truth. Tell me why you're here. Well, Your Honor, um, I'm here because I want to find out if he's, if, if he's cheating on me. Okay. Because I see signs of the earring that I found in his car. Okay. He said... I will presume it wasn't your earring. No, Your Honor. Is that the earring? Yes, ma'am. What, now, you... It wasn't earrings or... A two. It's a, it's a set. Well, Miss Newton, if he found them, you wouldn't have seen them before, right? Yes. So it's very possible they found him and wanted to give him to you, right? Well, that's what he said. He found him to give him to me. But you don't believe him. But I don't believe him. All of that has made you think something's going on here. Yes. Your woman's intuition is going ding, 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 yes. ding. <laughs> All right, Mr. Newton, she said she got <laughs> some things she's seeing. What's she seeing? Well, I've never seen the earrings, never in life. I didn't even know where these earrings even came from. Okay. But did you find them? Yes, I found them in my car. And when you found them, what did you do? Yeah, I just gave her these earrings so that I make sure that she was cool with the situation. She and, wasn't. And she, and she wasn't. Uh-huh. And so I you, you didn't try to hide it. You didn't try to... You came... No. Hey, I found these earrings. I okay, found these Mr. earrings. Mr. Cutler, how some earrings gonna get in your car and let somebody drop them or left them? That's probably what happened. But what he said who was... Is, who dropped the earrings? There it is. Who dropped them? Nobody. I don't know where these earrings came from. I've never even seen these earrings a day in my life. Okay, so what woman was in your car? Right. If no it woman. wasn't her, what other woman was in your car? There's no other woman that that's part. ever been in my car. So, I, I don't have any answers. Well, I think I'm still, I, but I think I'm still right, Mr. Cut. You always think you're right. That's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have these warning signs. Yes. Is there anything in your relationship that highlights or make these warning signs Well, we had important? difficulties in the past. Can yeah. you tell me about the past cheating? Well, I was on my way to uh, my grandmother's funeral and a situation happened. He's supposed to went with me, but he, he couldn't go. But while I was out there, I had the same feeling. And when I came back, it was a lady I knew and they had did some things, you know, and she called and let me know. Like, she cried and told me what was going on. And she was sorry about what? it. Okay. What was she sorry about? Because they had sex. Oh. oh. And this well, is somebody you knew? Yes. And she knew you were away at your grandmother's funeral? Yes. All right. What did you say to him? Well, I asked him and he told me no at first and then when she called and told me the truth, that's when he told the truth. When you get that, when you get that feeling, it's hard to, uh, to let go and trust again. So, I want to know if you're still cheating. So, now you are having these warning signs and that intuition is going ding, 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 yes, again. Honor. You just haven't gotten a confession. Yes. All right. And that's what you're here for. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Newton, you made a mistake in the past. Yes, Your Honor. How did this happen? Well, she was away... And, you know, I was feeling kind of lonely. I was down at the time or whatever. I mean, she's at her grandmother's funeral. Right. You're right. This happened, and at first you lied about it. Yes. But then you decided to come clean? Yes, sir. Okay, and what did you tell her? Now, I wanted to be able to go forward with our relationship, so I told her the truth. How did you all even get she, she together? She was coming over to the house while my wife was gone. So, were y'all already having conversation before she left about, no. I like you, you like me? No. Y'all just hooked up? Pretty much, yeah. Woof. Okay. You all got married, and you've been married ever since, correct? Yes, sir. So there's no way in the world that you would do something else to jeopardize that, right? No, Your Honor. But, well, why do you believe he's cheating now? He's saying, ain't no way I would jeopardize this, but you think it is. Because I went upstairs in the house, and he wasn't up there. So... I called his phone, he didn't answer. I called him again and he answered. I said, where you at? He said, at the store. I said, you ain't at no store because I'm at the store. Uh He said, no, I just left the store. I'm walking up the street. I had had family members sitting on a bench to watch uh, one of the houses. So I told him to stay right there. And why'd you do that? Because I wanted to see if he was at the the neighbor's house. So you thought something was going on. Right. So when he told me he was at the store, I went to the store. And I'm riding around the corner and I'm coming up the street. I say, I don't see you there either. And I can hear him running. I can oh, hear him running. Oh, through the phone. Because you're still you on the hear phone the with him. Right. I can hear him running. Okay. So the family member was like, oh, he just came out of there. He just came out of there. And it was a, a single woman's house. 
She got three things going on at one time. She's got surveillance going on. Video surveillance, audio <laughs> surveillance, yeah, she, and she, remote surveillance with a what, friend. Right, right. And she's being an eye spy on the side. I'm like, you got this thing covered. <laughs> that's because, you know, when, when, when it happened the first time, it's, it's hard to, to trust again. So that's why I'm like that. So he kept telling me he didn't do nothing. And he, he you know, and she said she didn't do nothing, but I want to know. What you doing at her house? <laughs> Well, this is the first time I ever went over to the girl's house. You know, I, I met her in the apartment complex uh, a while back. So you were over at this friend's house hanging out? Hanging out. Okay, this female friend. Yes. Why'd you lie? The reason why I lied, Your Honor, because I didn't want her to come over there to the house. You know what I mean? I was just trying to, just trying to make sure that nothing would happen to this lady. So you were more concerned with the lady than you were with what your wife no, would No, no, that's not what I'm saying, Your Honor. Well, nothing gonna happen to her. Something gonna happen to you, though, if you keep going over there. Right. If you ain't where you ain't supposed to be, that won't be a problem. Right, because I told him if the shoe was on the other foot and I came out of single man house, how would you feel? Right. And how would you feel? I would be upset. Yeah, you would. You'd be be tight. So, Ms. Newton, have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Yes. Um... Uh, one time, uh, I had picked him up at 3 o'clock in the morning from his friend's house. Not the same friend, is it? No, it's a different one. Oh, okay. Friend's <laughs> and I wonder why he was taking so long. So he came outside, and I put my hand in his pants, and it was silky. So I'm like, why does your stuff feel like you had a cup Wait, oh, wait. You said it was lotion. Okay, we got a, we got demonstrations here. Show okay. Them. What, what we got uh-huh. here? I have the lotion, and I have the lube. Okay, so what was it that you thought you felt on his his private? Oh, lubricant. I, I know what I feel. Okay, okay, lubricant. And when you asked him about that, what did he say? He said, well, lotion. Okay, so, so you... So I told him, lotion don't feel like that, honey. So you got... <laughs> and you can feel the difference. You got lubricant and you got lotion. I, I need to see that for myself. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, you know, see, I... That's the way it felt right there. Yeah, there's a difference. There is a difference. I'm gonna take her word for it. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Cutler, get in the game. Uh, I'll, I'll take your word for it. And then I went in the house. Oh, I'm, I'm there's mad. more. I, I, you know, I got upset, so I went in the house and I asked, who, who in here messed with my husband? And oh. one girl sitting in the, in, in the kitchen, the other one sitting on the floor, she's like, oh, no, that ain't me. My husband right there. So I'm looking, and the, the big girl, she ain't saying nothing, but, fro- you know, she was froze. So I was mad. Did anybody say he was with anybody? No, they didn't say nothing. They was just quiet. All right, Mr. Newton, you got a detective for a wife, okay? <laughs> for real. And... She sticks her hand down your pants and feels your private and feels what she says is lubricant, not lotion. How do you explain that at 3 o'clock in the morning? Your Honor, I don't remember her sticking my, my, her hands down my oh, pants. Oh, I stuck my hand in I stuck my hand You in don't remember that? No. I, I, I stuck my hand in his pants. I, I gotta say, I think that's the kind of thing I would remember. You Good. know, if I came out of the house <laughs> and... I stuck my hand in his pants. In fact, if you call me at 3 in the morning to come pick you up, you remember that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because we'd have a conversation. I mean, you had this discussion, and she just jams her hand down your pants. (laughs) She didn't say she jammed her hand down there. (laughs) And you let her do that. You don't have any recollection of that? No, I don't. Do you have a recollection of her asking you what took so long? No. Do you have a recollection of her going in the house? No. Okay, were y'all together? You have a recollection of being married? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so what did happen? Well, she, look, she called me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I told her, well, you, can you come get me then? So she came down to the house. I didn't have no problem with her coming out. If I was cheating, Your Honor, won't you think I would be well, not letting her, trying to let her in the house? So I let her in the house. I told her to come on in. You know, I don't got nothing to hide from you, babe. So she came in and whatever. She was telling me, well, I, I think it's about time for you to come home and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, it's time for me to go home. Let's go. So on the way going to, to the house, he was saying, oh, I wanted to go to the hospital to check you to make sure that you wasn't doing it. And I was like, I'm cool. I'm all up for that. She wanted to take you to the I'm hospital. I wanted to take you to the hospital to make sure that I wasn't cheating. Okay, did you tell him you were going to take it? I sure did. I'm just curious. What you going to say? Because they going to say, what's your emergency? What do you say to that? I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to make up some for them to check him. You know, Mr. Cutler, I, I think we might have enough. What, what we got here? Well, we've got cheating in the past, uh, yes. which he admitted to, and they apparently worked through that, but it's still in the back of Miss 
Newton's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, we found we have the gold earrings that were found in the car that he came forward and gave to her, but she still wants to know well, where they come from. And we have the lubricant on his privates. Lubricant versus lotion. Lubricant versus lotion. <laughs> and we have him being at the neighbor's house uh, and not telling her. And then, you know, him trying to prevent a scene, which obviously uh, has led to her suspicions that he's cheating. All right. Well, this court has done a complete and thorough investigation. At this time, the court would like to call former military interrogator Lena Sisko and certified polygraph examiner Kendall Shul to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Rob, would you the court... <laughs> How are you both? Great, Your Honor. How are you? Honor. We're good. So, we conducted both an interrogation and a polygraph examination on Mr. Newton. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. All right. So, Ms. Cisco, what did you do to determine about these gold earrings we've been hearing about? When I asked the accused about the gold earrings, he became very animated. So, he was talking with his hands. He actually leaned up into my space, and he gave me direct eye contact. And with conviction, he told me, I have no idea where these earrings came from. I saw no signs of deception, and I believe he was telling the truth. All right. <laughs> but, Mr. Shul, you also asked him when your wife found gold hoop earrings in your car, were those earrings left by a woman with whom you had had physical sexual contact? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. All right. <laughs> Ms. Cisco, in your investigation, what did you determine happened regarding the night that he was with his friends, over at his friend's house. When I started asking Mr. Newton about this accusation, he laughed out of embarrassment because he told me that he was embarrassed that this was gonna come up in court. He admitted that there were about four or five girls in the house, but when I asked him over and over again, was he with a woman with conviction, he told me no, he had congruent body language, and again, I saw no signs of deception. And Mr. Shaw, you asked him a polygraph question regarding that same evening, correct? I did, Your Honor. Right. You asked him, the night your wife picked you up from your friend's house and confronted two women in the house, did you have sexual intercourse with either of those women on that night? What was his response to that question? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Uh -huh. I'm still not seeing a smile on Ms. Newton's face. <laughs> I think she still needs to be convinced. Okay. <laughs> what did you determine about Mr. Newton and this female neighbor that we've heard about? When I asked him specifically if he had had sex with the female neighbor, he immediately leaned back in his chair and he crossed his arms and his right leg began to shake and he pursed his lips. When I asked again, what happened with that neighbor? He said nothing. But as he said nothing, he shrugged his shoulders. So that is a universal sign for uncertainty. And as he did that, as soon as he ended, he flashed contempt on his face. It's that half smile that looks like a smirk. Oftentimes, after a person lies, they will flash that. And so in that case, I saw numerous indicators of deception, and I do not believe he's telling the truth. So his mouth is saying one thing, his body's saying something completely different. Correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Shaw, you asked him about the neighbor. You asked, have you had sexual intercourse with the female neighbor whose house your wife caught you leaving? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Newton. That's crazy, man. It is crazy, but what happened with the neighbor? We never had sex. Sexual contact, kissing, hugging, petting, everything but? None of that. You were asked one other question. You were asked, since you've been married, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife, Mrs. Newton? 
Mr. Shull, what was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. <laughs> Ms. Newton, you came here for the truth. You've gotten at least those answers. Well, I'm not okay with the lying. I just want him to tell the truth. Because I would tell him the truth without him asking me. You all have been together for a year and a half and have been married for five months. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Harris, why have you brought your wife uh, five months to court today? Well, Your Honor, I think that my wife is just cheating with men, and I'm here to find out today um, if she is or isn't, if my marriage is worth it to her, sir. What does that feel like to think that your wife for five months is cheating on you? Every day I struggle. I go crazy in my side of my head. It makes me sad. It tears me down. I'm just constantly rebuilding myself up. Every day, struggle. All right, so what do you hope to, to prove today? I hope that everything comes out correct and that we can find a way to get past our issues and, and, and save our marriage. It's my first marriage, and it means the world to me, and it's sacred, so I, I want to do anything and everything that I can to save it. <laughs> Miss Ayala, what are you here to prove? I'm here to prove that I love her and there's been mistakes in our relationship, but I'm willing to do anything to save it. I love her. Okay. I'm so in love with her. So this is really deep to you because I see the tears. I hear the emotion. Tell her what does she mean to you? You mean the world to me. And you know I've made mistakes. But we can get past it. We always... Every ob obstacle we've come across has been hard for us. Not just that, but everything. And we can get over anything. Aww. For real, Tim. For real. Uh, Ms. Harris, what's on the line here today? Um, Your Honor, my marriage is at stake. Everything, um, I honestly, I haven't, um, I haven't, I feel like people don't take me and my marriage seriously, Your Honor. I feel like um, they laugh at me. I'm, I feel like I'm made a fool of because of the things that have happened. Um, I feel, Your Honor, that um, I haven't even been able, honestly, to be um, sexually active with my wife until because of what the, the cheating and the things that have gone on, I haven't been able to put myself in a position to do so because I'm not comfortable. So everything, my whole life is at stake right now. How long has that been going on? About two months, Your Honor. Wow, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel worse than I already do inside, you know? I mean, it causes more stress than, than needed and more problems that are unwanted. Are you punishing her? No, I'm not, but I just can't bring myself to do things that are, are sacred to me without knowing what has been done. So, Mr. Yala, do you feel the tension in this relationship? Yes, daily. Do you feel it? Tell me what that, what that is like. It's stressful, you know? Um, I feel like I've been put in situations that has resulted in, in, in damaging our relationship, partly on, due to Demi's behavior towards me. And so, from your standpoint, you're saying that's all in the past, though? Yeah, it's in the past, yeah. as and, of today. And your wife is here to find out what's currently going on? Yes. And you are here to tell her that there's nothing currently going on? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Okay, so... You all had some time before this, before this tension. Tell me about what it was like when you fell in love. She was totally different from anybody that I've ever met. It's like she... I found a lot of qualities in her that um, I didn't even really know that I liked. She's a wonderful mom. Um, she's funny. She's, she's, you know, dysfunctional. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's super dysfunctional and, and, and being multitasking, and I'm not. I'm very... I get things done. I'm, I'm on point. So, it, um, she kind of balances me out, you know? And I didn't really know, and, and I found all these qualities in her that made me want to marry her. I could... I totally am okay with being with her for the rest of my life. And, you know, another thing was that, you know, I, she was not normally the type of person I would go for. She pursued me hardcore. Okay. She came after me okay. and, and was very consistent and persistent, which made me... I had to give her a chance just on that alone. Right. Just her Who doesn't like being changed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I decided, you know, she... With the pursuance of me, I, I had to just... I had to try. I, you know, I had to give her a right. chance. So, Mr. Yala, what was it about her that made you pursue her? Look at that I... smile, cut. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, she's giggling and blushing. I love it. I just... I... I had, like, a crush on her from afar for, like, a year 
before she even knew. Never knew. Oh, what made you make the first move? I wanted her so bad. Wow. <laughs> I wanted her so badly <laughs> that I was willing to put myself out there and, and basically I started crying <laughs> like I was... <laughs> Wait a minute, Look. did you... Did you hear her? Look. She went... <laughs> Look, when she you, got chill. She's got chill. When you see something you want, you go for it, right? Right. There you go. That's right. how we got together. You see something, you go for it. Yeah, Absolutely. Mr. Color, he kind of chased me a little bit. Well, <laughs> I, I, saw, I saw you yeah. and I had to have you, right? I ain't mad at you. There you go. <laughs> all right. So, it sounds like you all got off to a great start. Yes, we did, Your Honor. What went wrong? Oh, man. Basically, um, we were having a kind of a rough time in our relationship, and um, we had gotten to a disagreement, and um, she chose to leave with, with a neighbor. And, um, you know, when I called and asked her what she was doing, because I had this feeling that, that she was being, dis you know, there was infidelity, she told me that I, I was incorrect, so... Did you ever ask your neighbor about this? Uh, th I didn't have to. She was on her way home to me. And, and, and the neighbor and her had gotten into a, a disagreement and the neighbor, call, and my, and the neighbor called me and, and told me she slept with a nephew not once but twice. So before your wife could even get back home, oh. the neighbor had already called you? Yes, Your and, Honor. And told you that she had slept with the neighbor's nephew? Yes. Yes. Wow. How did you yeah. do that? I was in a vulnerable spot, a vulnerable day, a vulnerable month, a vulnerable... So you were hurt, you were angry. Yes. This person right. caught you at a point where you, where you normally wouldn't have said yes, but you took a second look. Yes. There was no prior contact. One thing led to another. I kind of felt pressured and vulnerable. We weren't having sex. We were arguing all the time, you know? I, I didn't have no okay. outlet to speak to anybody about anything, so I felt down. Okay. You know, I felt... I saw you shaking your head like, mm -mm, mm -mm, what is that? Why are you shaking your head? <laughs> Vulnerable and angry, Your Honor, I took too long in the shower, so she decided to leave. Um, and then, um, just uh, previously before that, there was a fellow with a bad rep that I knew that I told her not to go around, and um, I was so sick I couldn't have covers on me. And I needed her to take care of me, and I wake up the next morning and she's gone. And it's not until the people that she's with leave her stranded somewhere and she busts through my door and falls asleep that I go through her phone and find out that her little friend has, has told her, oh, well, don't let Demi know that, you know, what's going on and just sneak out and just go with us. It's okay. Mr. Yala, oh. you seem to disagree with that. Yeah. I have caused a lot of unwanted, unneeded okay, so, pain to our relationship. But, but, but aren't you giving her a reason for her to be suspicious of you? I mean, if you're going out with people that are... She... I'm put in... The, we fight so much. I'm put in these situations. There's nothing that I don't do for her, Your Honor. I'll give her a bath if I have to. I will shave her legs. I will cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner for her. I take care of her. I help take care of her kids, Your Honor. I put everything on, on the line. My family will not mess with me because of how she's done me, Your Honor, but that's my wife, and I refuse to let anybody stand or get in her way, you know, of us. And, and if it means going through things to get, get to, the, you know, the good parts of it, I will do that. Do you think that these individuals are not supportive because you're a same-sex relationship? I think these individuals aren't supportive because she allows them to not be supportive. She doesn't... She allows them to, to do whatever... That she, she, she says it's okay for whoever or whatever to go against our relationship. She doesn't correct anybody, and that's why I feel like a fool, and I feel like our relationship isn't taken seriously. This is very serious to me. I, I feel like I'm, disre I'm constantly disrespected. Everybody's laughing at me. Like, I, res I... And I demand respect in my relationship with her because I would... I would never let anybody disrespect her or this relationship. <laughs> Why do you believe that she's cheating now? She got mad and took off me. It was gone for five days. I had no idea where she was. What caused her to take off? I had, I, um, you know, Your Honor, she left me at the dollar store with our groceries and told me that I didn't care about her nor love her and um, waited until I got home to leave. And she didn't have a phone, so I'm trying to find out where she is. I mean, I, I start getting private calls and I don't answer private calls. Well, I finally answer it and lo and behold, it's my wife calling me private. Hold on. I look, I'm seeing the look on your face. You look angry. Tell me what you're feeling right now. <laughs> Every emotion possible. It doesn't matter what happened in the details because we, we're, we'll fight till the end about that. The problem is we need help. But in order for us to help you, we need to kind of know some of the details. Why did you leave? Because me and Demi, me. when we're together, we need air sometimes. 
Okay, and when couples argue, yeah, sometimes you need some breathing room, some breathing space. Now, most people don't leave for five days. <laughs> Disappear. So, yeah, so why did you leave for five I, days? Well, I, I left spontaneously. I couldn't help it. I, okay. I, Let I, me ask you, what Aaron. do you think happened Ms. Harris, during those five days. During those five days, um, I found out she was with someone that she had ran off with before that was so despicable to me because I took care of this guy when he had nothing. And then he takes off with my wife knowing how I feel. So I feel like she took off with him again and I felt the first time it happened that she was liking on maybe, maybe that some, some sexual had happened. You believe that she cheated on you? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Ms. Ms. Ariel? No. <laughs> it, That's so untrue. So nothing happened between you and this mutual friend? No. To top it off, to top it off, I run into a friend of mine that I haven't seen for a few months. Um, and, and he tells me one of the nights that she had taken off on me here within the last month or so, she takes off with, with his, his relative and um, they're together the whole entire night. And I think that something sexual happened that night as well. She says that it didn't, and, and, but they just went to the casino. Uh, my, my friend says otherwise, you know? He says that he wasn't in the house, but he's pretty sure that they, they had sex. And I'm just like <laughs> blown away. This is it kills me. It, it... We have a statement, a witness statement to the court about that event, and I'd like to read it into the record. I know for a fact that Sasha slept with one of my family members. My family member told me all the details of him and Sasha. He told me where they had sex, how many times. And he was very explicit. My family member said they had sex like five times that night. I had to let Demi know about all this because she's my friend. How does that make you feel? I see the tears in your eyes. Not good enough, Your Honor. I feel worthless. Like, what's wrong with me? I love her. I've never stepped out on her. I've, I've made my mistakes being controlling and things, but I was given every, every issue to, Your Honor. I was given every reason to, to feel that way, but I love her with all my heart. This is my wife, and I just feel like if it can be saved, it can be saved, but I haven't been able to be sexually active with her. I haven't been able to even have a relationship, really, because I feel like it's so much lies that I just need, need, I need the truth. And, and, Honesty, and she's not able to give it to me, so that's why we're here today. And that's what this court is about, trying to help people find answers so they can move forward. The truth. Miss Ayala, I see that you're hurting. I see you looking. How does it make you feel that whatever you've been doing, even if it's been innocent, is making your wife feel worthless? Those are the words out of her mouth. It kills me inside. It does, because I do love her. And I want to fix this. I just don't know how. <laughs> well, do you understand how disappearing for days at a time and being with other people will contribute to her feeling this way? Of course. I mean, I'm, I'm vulnerable too, Your Honor. I hurt too, but I don't go sleep with other people to make it better. All right, you came into this court. You've testified that you did not have sex with your neighbor's relative, nor with a mutual friend. Your wife is begging, pleading for the truth. I'm going to ask you, and I'm looking right in your eye, are you telling the truth? No. Oh. All right. Did you have sex with the mutual friend? Yes. It just happened. <sighs> Damn. Look at me. I can't look at you. I just wanna, I just, if there's no. anything that can happen, just look between us, if there's anything that I can fix. I want to fix it. If not, I just want us to be better, better people. Miss Harris, she's confessed. Where are you? Can you accept her confession and move forward? No, Your Honor. I can't, and I won't. I don't want to lose my. 
Miss <laughs> Ayala, I want to get to the bottom of the other accusation. Did you have sex with the neighbor's relative? Yes. <laughs> they're this they're, is they're they... friends. <gasps> There's not five, six people now. So hold on, on, hold on. She's 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 opening up. Talk to us. Tell us how this occurred. There there was no sexual intercourse. Let's say that on this one. Okay. Until you all figure out how to communicate your needs and your desires, you're gonna have these situations. And Miss Ayala, at the very beginning, Miss Harris said she has some concerns about the people that you're hanging around with. Well, those concerns seem to be valid to me because these people that you're hanging around with, as soon as they see you're in a vulnerable position, they're taking advantage of that. Those are not good people to be around. So if you're going to move forward, you either have to get your friends in check or find some new ones.